Welcome to my favorite section. In this section I'm going to show you a few of my very favorite formulas that I use a lot in Excel. And oddly enough, you'll probably realize quickly this isn't all about manipulating actual numbers. Some of it has to do with text. So the first formula we've talked about already, it's the sum. And again, I love it just because it, it lets you check things. Quick little aside, if you highlight these three, you can see down here, Excel automatically gives us the average, the count, and the sum. So it's just a nice little way to check your data. Average is another one we've talked about before. I really like it just because, again, it helps you do some analysis, lets you know where things stand. Um, sum if is an interesting formula, and the context for it is just simply testing a value in a given range and adding the values together to give us a little sum. So in this case, I have set it so that it looks at the range A7 to A9 and it compares that to the value in C16, which is now at this point the, the letter C, and then it sums the range B7 to B9. So the short version is we're getting a total units sold for salesperson C. If we put salesperson A, that will change. Now in a three person list, really not that exciting a feature. But if we had hundreds and we wanted to see how many units one salesperson or one region sold, you could use the sum if just to give you a quick calculation. Um, again, if I'm doing complex things, I'm going to use pivot tables, um, but if I just, for example, don't want to get into data analysis, I could put a formula up here and let it go through and do the searching. VLOOKUP stands for Vertical Lookup, and it's a formula that searches for a value in the first column of a table and returns a value, value in the same row from a specified column in that table. So basically, this is a formula you would use if your comparison values are located in a column to the left of the data that you want to find. So again, in this case, we can have it set so that it's looking in our little table for the value A, and you can see it's A6 to D10, so that's A6 to D10. And we want the value from the third column, so it counts one, two, three. And here we can set true, which will give us the, the closest match. False will give us a, an exact match. And as you can see right now, the output value is going to be 115. So it stops with the first one. Now HLOOKUP very similar. It's performing a horizontal lookup by searching for a value in the top row. So it looks for this. So for example, if we wanted March, and then we're returning a value in a specified column based on the index number. And again, formatting is very similar. So we want to look for the month January, and we want the second row. So as you can see, our value is 100. Um, again, not very useful in a tiny little analysis like this, but if we get to using larger data tables, which we will show you, um, we will also include an example of each of those because they're very relevant. Um, now, I mentioned some of my favorite formulas don't actually have to do with numbers, but text. So these are all used together in my world. So write, it truncates data, giving you values from the right of your text. So this is the text we're manipulating. And what I said was, give me the right text from this text string, and I want the number, which is B28, plus 1. I'll explain that when we get to that. Um, basically, this 
find feature, all it is is it's showing where the comma is, and then we want to skip the space, so it's giving us all the characters from the space over. So we click OK, and the left, again, it truncates the data, and it just gives us everything up to the comma. So again, 15 marks the space, the number of characters where the comma is. So in our formula, we're saying from the text in cell E24, give me 15 less 1. So it's basically all the characters to the left of that comma. And mid, well, that one just, as it says, or indicates, from this text, starting at that precious comma again, plus one, so we're skipping the space, give me eight characters. Um, so again, that's just giving me the, the city. And len, what that does, it's very simple. As you can see, it counts the total number of characters in the string of text and find, it's very straightforward, basically we're saying find me the comma, the first comma, within the text in E24 starting at number 1. Now if I really wanted to get fancy, equals find, again we'll use the comma, within the same text, but this time let's start at that one, plus one, so we want to start after it. We click OK, and the second comma is located at 24. So we could use this to basically carve up this into three separate columns where we're giving away the, the actual data. So again, if somebody gives you a very messy list and it just has street, city, province in the same cell, you could put these formulas over here. Let's just change that. Oops. Oh, sorry. Mid would be the most appropriate one here. So text, comma, starting there, plus one. And, okay. So what that gives us is instead of one column with everything in it, it gives us three columns with it separated. Now one thing you may have noticed, I can just click and drag and I can drop these things pretty much wherever I want. Now let's say we want to get rid of this column. The easiest thing to do is you copy and then you say paste special and say values. And as you can see, we now have values there so we can actually delete this. It doesn't impact any of our information. So again, Excel has some great functionality and where I would use that is if you're going to send out a mailing list but for some reason your database looks like this, you could create a nice little mail merge that you can use in Word. Um, so again, great functionality in Excel.